r slash ask reddit what's a red flag that you ignored in a significant other only to realize it was a bigger deal later she was always angry about something i loved being the person to hear her out and take her side but soon enough i was always the person that made her angry edit whoa thanks for the gold and silver y'all totally didn't expect this comment to explode like it did on the one hand it's cool to connect and bond over shared pain but damn does it suck to see so many people affected by angry sos yup in my case angry plus violent i thought i was contributing to the relationship by quickly forgiving forgetting in fact I was failing to defend the most basic of boundaries and perpetuating the behavior. Wish I had good news. We're still married. Trying to launch our poor damaged children. Think long and hard about who you pair up with. Kids. Speaking from personal experience. As the child of one of these situations. Don't think you are doing your kids any favors by staying together. I was relieved when my parents divorced because the arguing stopped. We had a summer job painting and repairing dorm rooms. While we worked, one of us would start singing a song. If he picked the song, we would sing it together. If I picked the song, he would sing a different one on top of me until I switched to his song. This was a perfect metaphor for our entire relationship. Edit. Thank you everyone who shared your stories. I'm very glad mine was able to help you. For those who asked, it took me 6 years to realize the problem and do something about it. Abuse that erodes you slowly over years can be hard to spot and harder to do anything about. Never feel ashamed of how long your own journey takes you. I am now married to a wonderful partner who sings along with me. Ironically, our music tastes are completely opposite and we both can't stand the other person's favorite songs. But here's a green flag for you. We talk and joke about it all the time. Address if there's an actual issue. And had a very carefully curated wedding playlist we also came up with a game where we will call out our number ratings of whatever song that comes on the radio. Which lets us know when to change the song for the other person's sake. And also has found us a few more songs we didn't realize we agree on. That's actually sad. I've had friendships like that. It's harder to tell in a group setting. I assumed it was because no one heard me so I needed to talk louder but because I got talked over I lost my confidence and talked quieter. Turns out they heard me. Just didn't care. I mean. Sure. She has a boyfriend and probably shouldn't be flirting with me so hard. But you know, that dude treats her like shit and doesn't realize how lucky he is to have her. I bet you can't guess how that relationship ended 4 years later. The tables. They turned? Oh how the turntables. He used to tell everyone he wanted to join the military so he could kill people. Edit. I think this blew up the way it did because it touches on a deeper issue. Some of your comments disturb me but I'm glad we're talking about it. Most of you seem to agree that this is not a healthy mentality to have. Yes, I am aware that there are people in the military that kill other people. And people in the infantry must be willing to do it sometimes. But the red flag here was not his willingness but his desire to kill people. I'm ashamed to admit that this was mild for him. Even for the beginning of our relationship. But I won't reveal anything else here because I'll just look like an even bigger fool than I already do for staying with him. Good lord. He's a marine now. He was very proud about how good he was at manipulating people and causing them problems. Up to and including costing one person her job. Justified in that he only did it to bad people who deserved it. The problem was, it was people he determined to be deserving. Edit. Since so many people asked, unless he was a big hairy gay dude also into big hairy gay dudes, you probably knew a different manipulative joke. And he got the girl fired by antagonizing her in person repeatedly and claimed it was based on something a mutual acquaintance at work said. He then goaded her into losing her temper via text with both him and the acquaintance. Which he brought straight to HR. He cried crocodile tears and said he didn't know why she was being so cruel to her co-workers. Classic NPD. Been their fam. The creepiest part to me is how they tell you so proudly like they want praise for using someone. Oh definitely. He was so proud of it. Everything blew up after the breakup not because we didn't work out but because I casually mentioned to him that I was always aware when he was trying to manipulate me. And just went along with it. My wife is a violent sleeper. There were signs. I ignored them. Now we sleep with a pillow barrier. I'm a horny sleeper. What does that tell you? My boyfriend is too. 
He used to be a sleepwalker and somehow has turned into sleep sex. But he doesn't remember trying to have sex at all when I tell him the next morning. She had a best friend who was a dude that was clearly in love with her. They had known each other for less than a year. And she had slept with him once prior to dating me in a moment of weakness. She never let me meet him. He would not acknowledge my existence to her nor would he acknowledge that she was in a relationship at all. Texted each other non-stop. I bent over backwards trying to accommodate this guy and give her the benefit of the doubt. We break up for different reasons after about 4 months. The first person she sleeps with days after our breakup, you guessed it, the best friend. A few months later she contacted me hoping to give our relationship another go. I guess the best friend thing didn't work out. I told her I was not interested. Well done bro. Are you Roy from the warehouse? I wouldn't say it's necessarily a big deal now, but it has definitely made us reconsider our ways. I'm somewhat sloppy slob why. Typical bachelor things. Leave socks in the living room. Dishes pile up for 2-3 days. My wife never made a big deal out of it. I thought it was awesome that she didn't nag like my mom used to. Turns out it's because she's even more messy than me. So we ended up living in a pigsty. The happy ending is that once we decided to grow up and make a chores list. We also tend to gain momentum once we start. It's just the getting started that's an issue we're working on. Edit. I'm glad I'm not the only one. What's been helping is an app. We use or home. But I'm sure there are others. There's a pre-made list of chores. We just went down and picked a few we know we are bad at and set them on a timer. 2-3 times a week for example. Then had a couple more chores a few weeks later. It helps because often times we'll just be sitting on the couch on Reddit or Netflix while chores sit undone. With an app we get a notification and take a Reddit break to get something done. This one didn't make me sad for once lol I did. Thanks for the silver. One thing that might help you is having some hard rules about specific areas in the house. We're both poor housekeepers. So we've made a short list of things that have to be done before we go to bed. For example, all work surfaces in kitchen have to be empty and clean. No exceptions. Doesn't matter if we're tired or busy. That keeps stuff like dishes from piling up. It's hard to learn housekeeping and cleaning if you didn't pick it up young. But it definitely gets easier over time. We now have a routine that doesn't require any thought, so it doesn't take concerted effort to get started and keep things maintained. Many rooms in our home are now perpetually well organized clean and I'm very pleased about that good luck. Her habitual abuse of my wallet. She'd come to me for little things at first like her rent being due and she needed 10 or 20 to make it through the week. Some small cash for groceries or bus fare to school or an appointment. This would go from once a month to in the end multiple times a week. She'd always tell some sob story till I gave in. Later found out she always had the money. In fact she had plenty in the bank. She just didn't want to spend her cause she was saving up for a wild party vacation with her. As it turned out not so gay. Male friend. Edit. Wow. This blew up overnight. Didn't expect this type of response. Many thanks for the silver as well. I've dropped a few friends when I found out that they basically treated their boyfriends as walking atoms. Including one memorable occasion where she invited her boyfriend to the restaurant because it'll be fun and we're all having a good time. Had him pay her tab. Then ask him to leave because it's not really a couple's night. The really messed up part was that she was from a wealthy family. And he tended bar. Well, you know how their family got wealthy. Started with him not liking one of my friends. Then it moved to hating all my friends. Then it moved to hating my brother and parents. Then it went even further and transformed into wanting get me away from them as soon as he absolutely. He even told me once or twice that he'd kidnap me if he had to. Edit. Thanks for the gold. I'm just glad I can hopefully spread this story and prevent others from getting in the same situation I was in. Also loving the amount of stress strain jokes coming in. Isolation is a pretty good indicator he's going to be abusive. Yeah I wish someone flat out told me that back then. Not a significant other but probably one of the best friends I have ever had. Dude was the happiest and funniest guy you have ever met. Crack the best of the best jokes on the shortest of lines. Dude knew how to enjoy himself wherever he was. After the suicide we realized we never saw him without a bottle in his hand. We realized way too late that he was suffering from his time in Iraq and was too proud to say it. 
I'm afraid my friends see me this way. Well, friends, they think of me as outgoing and happy and social. But I feel isolated and friendless. I almost never get invited to anything by them. I always make the plans. And it usually doesn't work out unless it involves drinking. And no one ever directly and sincerely asks how I'm doing. I'm trying. And not suicidal. But it's super hard to find new friends and improve yourself and show that side. Knowing there are ramifications long edit, mandatory never thought this would blow up. I am really happy it's about real emotions. Though, anyone reading, there's some great stuff in the comments. Advice on subs to look at. Places to find exercise and hobbies. General life advice. It's pretty awesome. In the original definition of the word, reddit, y'all are great. Despite what gets said. It's been amazing having so many strangers reach out through comments and messages to support me. Anyone else in a hole, reach out. Even if it's on Reddit, there's a lot of people who want to anonymously help you because it's the right thing to do and they're good people. Reddit you all suck. You ruined my night if reading before bed by helping me. You also ruined my phone battery. I'll keep responding to stuff tomorrow. And my PMs are always open for anyone and any reason. But I'll probably slow down. The stuff I've said go for all the other comments. 2. I'm too lazy to edit this in everywhere. Thanks again everyone. Y'all are awesome. Open bracket. Do I qualify for one of those award acceptance speech subs yet? LOL. Bro. I've been down that street and was doing the same. I was the one planning meet up for friend and planning outings as well. Once I hit my lowest and was planning on suicide. I ran into one of my friends on the beach when I was walking to my location I picked. Once you hit your lowest point and get the help you need. You will know who your true friends are and the ones who are not your friend because you are not the same person. But hopefully you get the help before it goes to that stage. That little details and stories didn't always add up. Any single one could be easily dismissed or laughed off. But they kept coming. And kept getting harder to ignore. Turned out she was a compulsive liar. I hope she's better now. I'm pretty sure the cause of this was being molested by her father. Something I later surmised by adding up a bunch of clues. And desperately needing to fabricate her own reality. Edit. Apparently this is frighteningly common. And everyone who's been subjected to this has my sympathy. To the men of people who owned up to being the compulsive liar but are working on it. All the best to you in your journey of healing. Yep, once you've told all your friends that your parents are never home because they work hard, rather than that they are at home drunk, eventually you kind of sink or swim with the lies. The ones that swim never seem to want to come back to shore. I was a compulsive liar and this whole thread hit me hard. I definitely swam in my lies, but it always wears you down. I've realized not much is worse than trying to juggle around a million different lies. I'm still working on it. I don't have it perfect yet, but I'm getting better. She said Rihanna incited Chris Brown. It was a red flag she had a severe case of battered woman syndrome and when we got in fights she would taunt me that a real man would slap her for mouthing off. I've actually had somebody I used to be involved with tell me she was proud of her bruises in regards to her latest guy. It's not an easy thing to hear. That is a deep lie buried in so few words. His toxic mother. If I had the chance to do it all again, I still would. He is a wonderful husband and father, but I would drastically lower my expectations of his mother. From the onset, my in-laws were pretty shitty from the start. He would fight with them all the time and after we got married they would start using anything I did as an excuse to have a go at him. But I loved him and tolerated it for him. He passed away earlier this year and now they are doing everything they can to screw me out of his estate. Not to mention anything we own jointly. Although they are happy to leave me with all the expenses and joint debt. My only advice if you have toxic in-laws. Write a will. Protect your spouse and yourself and the family that you created from financial ruin and extra stress. I have no doubt that if my husband knew what would happen he would have run to the first solicitor available to protect me from them. Dunno what country you're in. But in the US the precedent law is clear that his parents have no claim whatsoever if you were married at the time of death. Any estate lawyer should be able to manage that issue in court. I'm sorry for your loss and the struggles you're facing. Good luck to you. Check out r slash if you need any help with specifics. 
She told me in passing that she accidentally burned half of her ex's kitchen while she was cooking. Didn't think anything of it until I came home to half of my wardrobe on fire in the backyard. Looking back, I probably should have seen that coming. I think you're being too hard on yourself. She was just trying to send you smoke signals. Agreed. If she mentioned it using the same word choice as you did in your comment, I would have assumed she messed up cooking. Kitchen fires aren't so incredibly uncommon and people f up. He would go on these weird rants about how controlling and unreasonable my parents were for giving me a curfew. Wanting to meet him. Making sure I had food and money, you know. Being parents cause I was 17 at the time and still in school. Guess who turned out to be completely controlling and unreasonable? Projection is often a huge red flag. Instant gratification that was never enough. A whole relationship of, I need this. I really need this and as soon as she had it, I bought it. She discarded it and moved on to something else shiny she really needed. I had to always ask for sex. I chalked it up to him being shy. He was gay. I had that happen to me except I didn't ask. We dated for 2 years and he never tried to have sex with me. Gay. I married a lesbian. Man shrugging. For the first 2 months we dated, anytime I suggested going to his place instead of mine, there was always some reason why he couldn't do it, eventually discovered that he was a hoarder. I had a similar experience with a woman turned out to be married. I had a similar experience with someone who turned out to be in high school. Just that we wanted different things in life. She wanted to move to NYC and I wanted to stay in our sleepy college town near the mountains and the ocean. I think we both thought the other would change their mind. But it didn't happen. Those sort of things tend to change with people over time. 5 years ago I wanted to live right in the middle of a city in a fancy condo 100 feet above the ground. Now the sleepy college town by the sea and mountains is where I want to be and I feel more confident that will be my long life term desire. I didn't have that confident long term feeling back when I desired the city. It's because young people should live somewhere energetic at least once, and then they can settle somewhere more well suited to their soul, which might still be in a city, to be fair. After asking my then girlfriend to only use the long distance on the phone a certain times due to the hellish rates at the time, this was before free a long distance, she still ran up a 600, 00 phone bill and got mad at me when I couldn't pay it, I didn't see how selfish it was then, I just thought she must really miss her family cause she did move to another state with me, I married her, and things honestly just got worse, but anyway. Are you still with her? Yes. It's a long story. Been with her since about 2000. Married for the last 10 years. We were heading straight for divorce in 2016. She had a stroke in January of 2017. I've been taking care of her ever since. Almost all his exes apparently were crazy. We had mismatched libidos from the start. I convinced myself things would get better when we were married. I chalked it up to Catholic guilt. He actually became completely disinterested in sex after we got married. He had brushed me off several times while we were dating. He even went so far as to throw me out of the bed once and tell me to take care of it myself on more than one occasion. The signs were all there. I just ignored it. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.